Grace, peace, and love, family. Welcome on back in to the Bread, Wine, and Soul Food Channel, where we deal with nothing but what thus saith the Lord, the Holy Scriptures from Genesis to Revelation, the King James Version of the Bible, and everything that the Father in Jesus Christ has made known and revealed unto us through His Spirit of Truth, also known as the Comforter and the Holy Ghost. So with that being said, all praise, honor, and glory be unto the almighty God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in Jesus' name. Because truly without him, like Jesus said over here in John 15 and 5, for without me ye can do nothing. So with that being said, let's open up this Bible study in Luke 1. But we're going to take a look at what the Lord uh, had Mary to say over here in Luke 1 and 46. we we'll read 46 through uh, 55. It says, and Mary said, my soul doth magnify the Lord and my spirit hath rejoiced in God, my savior. For he hath regarded the lowest state of his handmaiden for behold, from henceforth, all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath done to me great things and holy is his name and his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. He hath showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree. He hath filled the hungry with good things and the rich he hath sent empty away. He hath hope in his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. As he spake to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and application of his holy word to our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. So once again, welcome on in, family. I pray that everybody is doing well and everybody that it, uh, they enjoyed their Sabbath day yesterday. And so uh, before I get started, I just always want to say that uh, I'm always praying for all of us. I pray that the Lord forgive us of our sins as we journey down this path of a righteous path. That's leading us right, right to the doorstep of salvation. All right. So with that being said, what we're going to deal with today is a topic that the Lord Jesus Christ sent the spirit and inspired me to do. And that is <clears throat> a mouth of wisdom that adversaries cannot gainsay nor resist. Because throughout the course of this lesson, what we're going to take a look at is how people who speak by the spirit of God, uh, they telling the truth. When you operate in the spirit of God, you telling the truth and you getting your wisdom from God. So let's take a look at this. And a lot of people, they not going to like you because you are telling the truth. As a matter of fact, I just want to show you something before we get into it. Let's go over here to Amos, Amos five, because one thing about Jesus, he don't lie. He will never lie. Amos 5 and verse 10. Look at this. You'll see the reason why the world hates you is because this world is built off of lies. And when you start telling the truth, you tearing down Satan's kingdom. This is why you get so many people that uh, talk against the name of Jesus, saying that that name is no good. Well, you are wrong. <laughs> we got the scriptures right here in front of us telling us what his name is and everything. All right. So it's impossible for everything in the Bible to be true. And then when it comes down to his name, that's not true. No, you 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 prophesying uh, or, or you operating by a false spirit, because the thing is, Satan knows that there is power in the name of Jesus. And if he can get you to stop believing in that name, you don't have no more power no more. So I'm standing bold and I want you all to stand bold on the faith in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, because that's what we got written. All right. So watch this. You're going to have a lot of people that hate you because you tell the truth. It says they hate him. This is Amos 5 and 10. They hate him that rebuketh in the gate and they abhor him that speaketh uprightly. They're going to hate you when you speaking about the mouth of the Lord or when you got the wisdom of God in you. This world going to hate you. All right. So once again, let's go and take a look at this, because in the last days, when great tribulation comes upon the earth, People going to be delivering the servants of God up to the councils to be killed. But God told us not to fear those types of things. So let's take a look at this. Luke 21. And let's go. Let's take a look and see what's going to be happening in these last days. Luke 21. Let's take a look at verse 10. It says, 
Then said he unto them, Nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And great earthquakes shall be in divers places. That's taking place now. And famines and pestilences. That's taking place now. And fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven. But before all these, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. So you're going to be brought before kings and rulers for the name of the Lord? <laughs> for his name's sake? Yes. It says, and it shall turn to you for a testimony. And let's see what else, because um, God don't want us to be fearful when we are delivered up. If this does happen to us, he doesn't want us to be fearful of what's to come and not even to think about what you're going to be saying, because he's going to give us what to say in that same hour. Watch this. It says, settle it, therefore, in your hearts, not to meditate before what you shall answer. So when they deliver you up to the councils. Don't be trying to contemplate or what you don't be trying to plan out what you're going to say. You know why? Because the Holy Spirit is going to give you what to say. Watch. It says, for I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. So God said, I'm going to give you a mouth where they can't dispute or resist what you're saying. They won't be able to do this. As a matter of fact, let's take a look at this definition. Let's have a look at the definition for gainsay. So this is coming from the American Heritage College, College Dictionary. Let's take a look at the definition for gainsay. So where is it? Uh, let's see. I just had it over here. <clears throat> gainsay. Here it is over here. Gainsay. It says to declare false, deny, to oppose by contradiction. So God said that they... The wisdom that he's going to give us, they won't be able to deny it. This is why when you look at what happened with Jesus, he was telling the truth. And only they, the only thing that they could come up with was, oh, he's making himself God. Crucify him. They couldn't gain, say, nor resist the wisdom that, that was coming out of the mouth of the Lord. And so it was for the prophets and the apostles as well, which we're going to take a look at throughout the Bible study now. So once again. I want to show you something else. This is uh, this is here, the Webster's Collegiate Thesaurus. So let's take a look at some synonyms for gainsay. So it says to deny, contradict, contravene, cross, disaffirm, impugn, negate, negative, traverse, combat, fight, oppose, resist, withstand, etc. All right. So God said, I'm going to give you a mouth where ain't nobody going to be able to say nothing against what you are saying. So all of these people that disagree with the Bible and the word of God, one thing they can't say is that it's not true. And even if they do say that it's not true, just because you don't believe is that it's true, that don't mean that it is not true. OK, so once again, it is true. Jesus Christ is the truth. As a matter of fact, I want to show you something else, too. Let's go over here to uh, let's go and look at Isaiah. Let's look at this prophecy about the Lord Jesus Christ, because that ain't nothing but a trick from Satan. When they trying to tell you, oh, the letter J was created 400 years ago. Uh, well, guess what? <laughs> Were they speaking Hebrew in the days of Noah? No, they weren't. Were they? As a matter of fact. <laughs> When you take a look at what was going on, they were speaking in cuneiform. They were speaking by signs. And God is the one who created all of the languages anyway. So that that argument about, uh, you know, the letter J is it wasn't in existence till 500 years ago. man, That's a weak argument. Because how is it that the person who is denying Jesus Christ, they know who he talking about. You mean to tell me the one that created all of the languages don't know his name and all of the languages that he created? Man, you better go and get up out of here with that stuff. So Isaiah 50. Isaiah 50 and verse 4. Let's continue on. It says, the Lord God have given me the tongue of the learned. The father poured out the spirit upon Jesus without measure. It says that I should know how to speak a word and season to him that is weary. He wakeneth morning by morning. He wakeneth my ear to hear as the learn. 
So Jesus was taught wisdom and knowledge and understanding too. That's why he grew in wisdom and stature. He was taught this by the things which he suffered. Okay. So once again, this is talking about Jesus. Cause look at what it says. It says the Lord God have opened mine ear and I was not rebellious, neither turned away back. So the Lord Jesus Christ, he was here to do the father's will. That's all he did. He was, he committed himself to the father. Verse six That's how we know we are talking about Jesus. It says, I gave my back to the smiters and my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. So they spit on Jesus. They beat him. But this is talking about him, though. <clears throat> the tongue of the learn was with him. All right. So let's go and take a look at something else. Let's go and take a look at something else. And I, you know what? I want to I want to address this once again. I want to show you something else, too, because people. They just don't have no understanding and then they open up their mouth and then they look foolish because they haven't studied the Bible. All right. So I want to show you something because God, he reveals himself to us in stages. So I want to show you something over here in Exodus six, Exodus six and verse one. It says, now the Lord said unto Moses, now shalt thou see what I will do unto Pharaoh for I will. For with a strong hand shall he let them go, and with a strong hand shall he drive them out of his land. And God spake unto Moses and said unto him, I am the Lord, and I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty. But by my name Jehovah was I not known to them. So Abraham did not know God as Jehovah. He knew him as God Almighty. <clears throat> he knew him as a priest and a king. He didn't know him by the name Jehovah. All right. Which is Yah is salvation. All right. So he didn't know him by that name. <clears throat> so because somebody in Moses day say that, oh, his name wasn't God Almighty. No, you couldn't say that because he didn't reveal. <laughs> he didn't reveal that name to them at that time. So now that we know the name Jesus, which means he will save his people from his sins. You got people out here talking about you can't use the name Jesus. Listen, you need to go and rethink your doctrine. Think before you speak. OK, ask and pray to God for wisdom. Hopefully he didn't close up your understanding. Because a lot of people have a problem with the name Jesus that's written in the Bible. You believe everything else, but when it comes to the name of Jesus, it's a problem. No, that's satanic. So let's go and take a look at something else. Let's go over here to, uh, let's go and look at Mark. Mark 12. Because one thing about Jesus, he said that he had the spirit on him, right? Let's back up, though. I just want to show you what spirit was on him. Look at this. This is the spirit that rested on Jesus while he was here. This is uh, Isaiah 11 and 1. It says, And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. It's talking about Jesus. He came through the lineage of David. It says, And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. So he had discernment. He had wisdom, counsel and understanding, knowledge. This is the spirit that Jesus Christ was operating in while he was walking around in the flesh. And he still operates by this spirit because this is who he is. All right. So when he became flesh, he just embodied all of the characteristics of God. This is why he was uh, uh, the visible God, the one that you can see. All right. So let's go and take a look at this now. All right. He gave us wisdom, too. So we're going to take a look at some of the wisdom that Jesus had and how these people constantly was questioning him. And every single time he was shutting them up. They didn't even have no more questions to ask him. He had his words so airtight. Nobody could say nothing against him, even to the point to where they was making up stuff on him to to crucify him so let's take a look at this at mark 12 
Mark 12 and verse 28. So let's see. It says, and one of the scribes came and having heard them reasoning together and perceiving that he answered them well, asked him, which is the first commandment of all? So they trying him now because he answered the question the correct way. Before we got to this point, it says, and Jesus answered him. The first of all, the commandments is hear, O Israel, the Lord, our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. Once again, it says in the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbors thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. So he just summed up the, the whole commandments for us. Listen to what God is saying. Don't have no other gods before the true and living God and love your neighbor as you would yourself. And, and with that, you can sum up all of God's law. But verse 32, let's see what they said. It says, and the scribe said unto him, well, master, thou hast said the truth. He said, you told the truth. These people that's disputing with him or uh, questioning him, they are confirming that he's telling the truth. It says, for there is one God and there is none other but he. And to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding and with all the soul and with all the strength and to love his neighbor as himself is more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. So they said that's better than uh, burnt offerings and sacrifices because to obey is better than the sacrifice. Ain't that what it say over there in first Samuel 22? Uh, 15 and 22 it says and when jesus saw that he answered discreetly he said unto him thou art not far from the kingdom of god and no man after that durst ask them any question because he shut their mouth up they didn't have nothing else to say all right so god has given us a mouth of wisdom where people ain't gonna have nothing to say you know they can probably try to make up whatever they're gonna say or whatever but they can't they can't dispute this because them same people that's disputing about the Bible is them same people that be coming to you secretly asking you questions, trying to learn more. But they just got too much pride to say that they was wrong. <laughs> so they do it in a roundabout way. Want to ask you more questions and learn from you. All right. So once again, let's go and take a look at something else because God gave us this wisdom. And we should be we should be standing boldly in this. Ain't nothing better than the wisdom of God. Don't let nobody question you or trick you about your spot don't let nobody take your crown from you stand bold on this word you're gonna have a lot of people that come against you but shut them down with the wisdom that god gave us the word of god is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword it's chopping down all of satan's kingdom that's what we got to stand bold and confident in people luke 14 and verse 1 it says and it came to pass as he went into the house of one of the chief Pharisees to eat bread on the Sabbath day, that they watched him. Jesus is constantly under the microscope. It says, and behold, there was a certain man before him which had the dropsy. So he said, had some type of uh, disease or uh, bodily function that was uh, unclean. It says, and Jesus answering spake unto the lawyers and Pharisees saying, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day? Well, to answer that question, yes. It's lawful to do good on the Sabbath day. It says, and they held their peace and he took them and he healed them and let them go and answered them saying, which of you shall have an ass or an ox fallen into a pit and will not straightway pull them up out on the Sabbath day? Because they would. Jesus was letting them know if you had a sheep or an ox that fell into a ditch, wouldn't you pull them out? You wouldn't wait till the sun went down to pull them out. You're going to get them out right now. So once again, what did they do? He shut their mouth and they could not answer him again to these things. You see how God had a mouth speaking where they couldn't gain, say, nor resist. They couldn't say nothing about the wisdom that Jesus Christ had. Just like we can't in this day and age. There is no counsel that could stand against God. Ain't that what they say over there in Proverbs 21 and 30? I just got to flash that on the screen because that's a cold proverb. Let me show you this too. Proverbs 21 and 30. I just want to flash it on the screen just so you all can be aware. Look at this. It said, there is no wisdom, nor understanding, nor counsel against the Lord. Out of the Lord's mouth come wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, right? 
So there is no wisdom that can exalt itself against the wisdom of God. And once we understand that we connected to God and we got the same power and wisdom when we ask God for it, they ain't going to be able to say nothing against you. They can talk bad about you, but they can't say that you a liar because you're telling the truth. The word of God is truth. All right. Once again, let's go and take a look at something else. Matthew 22. Jesus was constantly shutting these people's mouths up. Let's take a look at this. <clears throat> and when we grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, we do the same thing. Let's go and have a look. Matthew 22. Let's take a look at verse uh, 23. We're going to read this. Because they constantly questioning and tempting Jesus. Trying to figure out what's going on. So let's take a look. Matthew 22. Matthew 22. And verse 23, it says, the same day came to him the Sadducees, which say there is no resurrection and asked them. So the Sadducees, they didn't believe in no resurrection. So here they come tempting him. So this is this is just to show you, you know, <laughs> here they are trying to try him. They don't even believe in a resurrection, but they're coming up with a question about something that happens after the resurrection or in the resurrection. Well, let's take a look. It says saying, Master, Moses said, if a man die. Having no children, his brother shall marry his wife and raise up seed unto his brother. The uh, Leverite law. All right. It says, now there were with us seven brethren. And the first, when he had married a wife, deceased and having no issue, left his wife unto his brother. So that's what happened with Judah. When his, one of his sons had passed away and uh, Tamar, she was the wife or she was judah's daughter-in-law and so onan he or he was supposed to go in and produce a seed with tamar but he spilt the seed on the ground all right so he was supposed to raise up a seed to his brother because his brother had got killed all right so once again it says likewise the second also and the third unto the seventh and last of all the women died also therefore in the resurrection Whose wife shall she be of the seven? For they all had her. Now pay attention. You got some people here that don't even believe in a resurrection. Asking Jesus about a resurrection. So you see the spirit that they operate in. Now watch what Jesus told them. Jesus answered and said unto them. Ye do err. You in error. Not knowing the power of the scriptures. Nor the power of God. So he said you don't know the power of the scriptures or the power of God. It said, for in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. So when you get a spiritual body, you don't marry and you are not given in marriage. OK, it said, but they are as the angels of God in heaven. What is the purpose of a marriage to produce a godly seed? Correct. All right. So there is no sexual intercourse when you are a spiritual being. So that eliminates all of the angels sleeping with women and all of that junk. It said, but it's touching the resurrection of the dead. Have you not read that which was spoken unto you by God saying, I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. So God is not operating among the ones who are no longer with us. The ones that's deceased. He's operating among the living OK, this is what he's talking about. He's not the God of the dead, but of the God, of, but, but the God of the living. Not that he doesn't have any connections with the ones that did go into the grave, but he's saying that he is not operating among the dead. He operates among the living because the living, they are the ones that still, well, the dead are the ones that don't have a portion in anything under this, uh, uh, under the sun anymore. All right. But verse 33, it said, and when the multitude heard this. They were astonished at his doctrine. They was blew back. It said, but when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, he shut their mouth with the wisdom that he was speaking by. It said they were gathered together. So <laughs> once again, they gathered together to tempt him again. But he said this time, I got a question for you. Let's skip down to verse 41. So once again, it's always good to somebody asking you questions, ask them questions too. Because uh, questioning and interrogation to bring out the truth. 
Anytime somebody don't want you asking them questions, they trying to hide something. Something ain't right. You better get away from them. They get upset when you asking them things. Something ain't right. Something ain't right. So pay attention to that. All right. It says, while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them, saying, what think ye of Christ? Whose son is he? They say unto him, the son of David. He said unto them, how then doth David in spirit call him Lord, saying, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. So he said, how then, if, if Christ is the son of David, then how is David in the spirit calling him Lord? It said, if David then called him Lord, how was he his son? See, they couldn't answer this because Jesus came through the lineage of David, through David's line, correct? And also, not only that, David called him his Lord because he understood that Jesus Christ or the one known as Jesus at that time, it was Jehovah. He was the one that created him. This is how he was calling him Lord. So David and Jesus understood this. All right. God created David. This is how he was able to call him Lord. And not only that, God or Jesus Christ came through the lineage of David. This is how he was his father. It says, if David then call him, him Lord, how was he his son? They couldn't answer this. Watch this. And no man was able to answer him a word. Neither durst any man from that day forth ask him any more questions. So Jesus Christ, his speech was so airtight, they could not gainsay nor resist it. They couldn't say that he was lying. He was knocking them down with the wisdom. They couldn't say nothing about it. So when you're speaking by the wisdom of God, can't nobody say that you're lying? As a matter of fact, you will take a look at uh, uh, Acts 20. What was that? Acts 26 or something like that. When Paul was uh, speaking, when he was on trial. I just want to flash this on the screen too. Acts 26. Acts 26. And uh, when he was speaking to Agrippa, I just want to show you something. Acts 26 and verse 28. It said, then Agrippa said unto Paul, almost persuadest thou me to be a Christian. So Paul had that wisdom. He had that salt. From out of heaven and Agrippa, a man who didn't even believe in God said, you almost persuaded me to be a Christian, Paul. But anyway, let's go and take a look at something else because God gave us some wisdom. Let's go and take a look at who this with what this wisdom do. Let's go over here to Proverbs. Let's look at this uh, over here in Proverbs eight. And this is wisdom personified right here. This is what wisdom is. Let me show you this. This is what God has given to us. This is the spirit that rested upon Jesus Christ while he was here walking around in the flesh. This is the spirit that he has shared with the apostles, with the apostles and the prophets that spoke by the spirit of God. All right. It said, doth not wisdom cry and understanding put forth her voice. So she's speaking. It says she standeth in the top of high places by the way in the places of the paths. She crieth at the gates at the entry of the city. At the coming in at the door. So she all over the place. She's calling to the people that's coming in, in the, into the city. It says unto you, O men, I call. And my voice is to the sons of man. So she is talking to the earth. If you are a man, meaning the species, male or female, whoever you are. Wisdom is calling you. It says, O ye simple, understand wisdom. And ye fools, be of an understanding heart. So in other words, listen or apply your mind to what I'm about to say. Open up your ears and listen to this. Let's see what it says. Hear, for I will speak of excellent things. This is what wisdom is saying. And the opening of my lips shall be right things. So wisdom is saying everything I'm speaking is true, is, is, is right. For my mouth shall speak truth and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. So wisdom ain't dealing with wickedness. It's dealing with nothing but the truth. All right. So this is why we need to apply our heart to wisdom. It says all the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing forward or perverse in them. This is why the world cannot wrestle with what thus saith the Lord, because it's all true. <laughs> 
This is the reality of things. This is what wisdom is. It says they are all plain to him that understandeth and right to them that findeth knowledge. It's like it's simple. It's simple and it's right. It's correct. It says receive my instruction and not silver and knowledge rather than choice gold. So we need to be receiving what wisdom is telling us. Wisdom is the word of God. And if you really want to know, Jesus Christ is wisdom. We'll take a look at that uh, uh, later on, Lord willing, at the end of this program. It says, for wisdom is better than rubies and all things or all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. Because if you got wisdom, you got everything. And really wisdom is coming from God. So if you got God, you got everything because he's giving you the wisdom. He's showing you how to get it. Whatever that is, you may... Uh, uh, desire and another thing that i was looking at how the holy spirit was pouring out upon me last night is how we were created in his image all right after his likeness so god has given us the, the ability to create you need wisdom to be able to create because that's what human beings do we create and build things which we're going to take a look at lord willing uh this coming up week and one of these bible studies we're going to deal with how the lord he uh, uh, he created us in our image and we supposed to be creating things, too. But right now, what we doing or what my main objective is, is to be building or establishing the kingdom of God on on earth right now. And when I say that, I'm talking about giving giving the wisdom and the knowledge and an understanding that God has given me to share with the rest of the people. That's how we building up the kingdom right now. All right. All right. So once again, that's why the kingdom don't come with observation. We building it up right now. All right. So once again, let's take a look at something. But that's not to say that the kingdom will not be coming down from out of heaven. So I don't want nobody to be confused about that. All right. So once again, we just putting out the we land the foundation right now. Let's go back to uh, Exodus. We putting in all of the groundwork for the kingdom of God to be established upon the earth because the word of God has to go out unto all nations for a witness against them and then shall the end come so that's what i mean by we establishing or building up the kingdom of god on earth right now through this information and through the acts and deeds that we doing in the name of the lord all right so uh, exodus 4 exodus 4 let's take a look at moses when he was afraid he was a little bit reluctant to go and speak to pharaoh but let's see what god told Moses, all right? Exodus 4 and verse 10, it says, And Moses said unto the Lord, O my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither heretofore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. So obviously, Moses wasn't the best speaker. He probably has some type of speech impediment. But let's see what the Lord said. And the Lord said unto him, Who have made man's mouth? Or who maketh the dumb or deaf or the sin or the blind? Have not I the Lord? So in other words, the Lord said, man, I know what I made you. <laughs> I did this. But not only that, I, I made the dumb, the, the, ble the deaf, the blind. I did these things, right? So since I did these things, let me show you what other kind of power I got to do. He says, now, therefore, go and I will be with thy mouth and teach thee what thou shalt say. You see what God told Moses? He said, I'm going to be with your mouth. I'm going to tell you what you're going to say. How can you resist this? When you when you speaking by the spirit of God, you can't, can't nobody resist what you're saying. Look at this. And he said, oh, my Lord, send, I pray thee, by the hand of him whom thou will send. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. And he said, is not Aaron thy, the Levite thy brother? I know that he can speak well. And also, behold, he cometh forth to meet thee, and when he seeth thee, he will be glad in his heart. So he said, you know what? I'm going to have Moses be your spokesman. He going to speak for you. All right? But the Lord said, "I'm man, go. I'm going to be with your mouth. And when Moses, you know, seemed like he was trying to get out of it, God was upset with him. But anyway, we see who was with Moses as he was talking to Pharaoh. So let's go and take a look at something else. Jeremiah 9. Because the Lord is, he gave the spirit of wisdom to the prophets as well. Let's go and take a look at Jeremiah. I want to show you this. Jeremiah 1. 
Jeremiah 1, and we read 1 down to 9. It said, The words of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, of the priests that were in Anadoth, in the land of Benjamin. So Jeremiah was a priest. To whom the word of the Lord came in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, in the thirteenth year of his reign. It came also in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, unto the end of the eleventh year of Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, unto the carrying away of Jerusalem, captive in the fifth month. It says, Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. God already know who each and every one of us is before we were even created. So you see what he said about Jeremiah? He said, I ordained thee a prophet before the nations. So you know he got some wisdom. But even Jeremiah, he was trying to get out of it. Look at what he said. Then said I, ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak for I'm a child. But the Lord said unto me, say not, I am a child. For thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. So you see how Jeremiah the prophet was speaking by the mouth of the Lord. Whatever the Lord told him, that's what he said. He didn't say his own thing. God said he ordained Jeremiah a prophet from the womb. So let's see what else he said. He said, be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. So Jeremiah was speaking by the mouth of the Lord. He gave him wisdom. So let's go and take a look at the apostles now. Let's go to Acts 6. Let's go to Acts 6 and let's pick it up at verse 1. Let's see another brother who was over here speaking by the mouth of the Lord. And the Lord gave him wisdom. Well, his adversaries could neither gain, say, nor resist. Even to the point to where he was speaking the truth so much that they had to lock this dude up and put him on trial. So watch this. I'm talking about Stephen. So anyway, it says, and in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring. <clears throat> of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. So the, the Grecians were complaining about the Hebrews because the widows weren't being taken care of. It said, the, then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, it is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. So the disciples said, look, we're not about to be <laughs> dealing with serving tables and we pushing out the gospel of the kingdom of heaven why don't y'all find somebody that'll take care of that business for us somebody that got some wisdom let's see it said wherefore brethren look ye out among you seven men of honest report full of the holy ghost and wisdom so the disciples appointed some brothers that had the holy ghost and wisdom to take care of the widows it says whom we may appoint over this business, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. So the disciples was focused on the ministry and pushing forth and spreading the gospel. But you see what he said? Find somebody that got the Holy Ghost and wisdom. Now they sought out somebody. Let's take a look at this somebody. Verse eight, it says in Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. This is the same Stephen that got stoned in the next chapter. Because they couldn't, they, they couldn't, they couldn't gainsay nor resist what he was saying. They did not like what Stephen was saying. It said, then there arose a certain of the synagogue, which is called the, then there arose certain of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of the Libertines and Cyrenians and Alexandrians of them of Cilicia and of Asia disputing with Stephen. So they going back and forth with Stephen, right? Let's see what happened. And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. They couldn't say nothing against it. They couldn't say that he was lying. Once again, this is a reference back to Luke 21 and 15. So what did they do? Then they suborn men. They bribed men. <laughs> they paid somebody. 
Just like the scribes and Pharisees and chief priests, they paid Pilate. They paid the soldiers to say that if anybody say that uh, uh, Jesus rose up from the dead, just say he didn't. They paid him. But anyway, it says, then they suborned men, which said, we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. So they couldn't resist what he was saying. So they had to bear false witness on him. What happened then? And they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes and came upon them, upon him and caught him and brought him to the council. Didn't God say that you was going to be brought to the council for his name's sake? But don't worry about what you're going to speak because the Holy Ghost going to give you in that same hour what you could speak or what you're going to speak. He said that over there, too. And uh, what was that? Luke 12 and 12. I believe that was Go and take a look at it. But, you know, it's a Bible study channel. So, you know, I'm going to flash it on the screen for you. Luke 12 and 12 for the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what ye ought to say. Now, let's see what happened here. Back to Acts 6 and 13. It said, and set up false witnesses, which said, this man ceases, ceases not to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and the law. They was lying. He wasn't speaking. No man speaking by the spirit of God can call God accursed. You can't call God a curse if you're speaking by the spirit of God. So they lying. I just want to show you this too. First Corinthians 12. First Corinthians 12. I'm a, we going to go back to Acts 6. I just want to show you. First, first Corinthians 12 and 3, it says, Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Whoa. <laughs> the only way you can say that is because you got the Holy Ghost. So this man got the Holy Ghost, so he wasn't going against what the Holy Spirit was showing him. These people are lying. Back to Acts 6 and verse 13. It said, and they set up false witnesses, which said this man ceaseth not to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and the law. For we have heard him say that Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the customs which Moses delivered us. But Jesus did say he was going to destroy this place. And when 70 AD came, it was totally flattened. <laughs> but anyway, it says. And all that sat in the council looking steadfastly on him, talking about Stephen, saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. So he was even lighting. He was lighting it up because the Lord had poured his spirit out upon him so much. His face was like the face of an angel. All right. So they couldn't gainsay nor resist what this brother was saying. And eventually, when you read the next chapter, he got stoned. So now let's go and take a look at. Acts 28, because we're going to wrap this up now. So do you all see how the wisdom of God is? It can't be spoken against. Can't nobody prove it to be a lie. Because this ain't this, this, no lies are the truth. This is the true word of God that we're dealing with right here. And can't nobody say nothing against it. So let me just show you something. Acts 28. Let's read uh, 23 through 24. Because Paul, he was doing this. It says, and when they had appointed him a day, there came many to him in his lodging to whom he expound, expounded and testified the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets from morning till evening. So Paul, he was telling the people about uh, uh, the law, Jesus Christ. And mo uh, uh, from from morning to evening. And he was dealing with the prophets as well. It said, and some believe the things which were spoken and some believe not. All right. But I want to I want to go and flash up something else over here, because Paul over here in uh, what was that? Ephesians six. Let me just come right back to this. We'll be right back. Let's go and look at uh, something in Ephesians six, Ephesians six and eighteen. Spirit is putting it on my mind. So let me just show you this. Ephesians 6 and 18. It says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplications for all saints. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. So that's what Paul was doing. He was speaking boldly by the spirit of God. So now let's go back to Acts 28. 
Acts 28. Let's pick it up this time at verse 30. It says, And Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house and received all that came in unto him, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence. No man forbidding him. Nobody was shutting him up or stopping him. He was preaching the gospel freely and with all confidence. And let me show you what our confidence is. Let me just flash it over here. Proverbs 3 and verse 26. I just want to show you something. Uh, Proverbs 3 and verse 26. It says, for the Lord shall be thy confidence and shall keep thy foot from being taken. So the Lord is our confidence. It's him. And this is whose spirit Paul was speaking by, the spirit of the Lord. So once again, let's wrap this up. Ephesians. Let's go back to Ephesians. Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4. And let's have a look at verse 29. Ephesians 4 and verse 29. Let's see what this says. Because God has given us wisdom, knowledge, counsel, and understanding to spread his word to the rest of the sons and daughters of Adam and Eve. So let's take a look. It says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying. So we're supposed to be edifying one another, not tearing each other down, not speaking bad about each other. We're not supposed to be doing that. We're supposed to be edifying one another, getting some understanding, teaching and uplifting one another. It said that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Why do you think that the servant of God is, is called a, a, a light. Well, why do you think you're supposed to be letting your light shine so that everybody else can be uh, uh, made aware of what thus said the Lord so that you can have wisdom too? So we got to share this, all right? Let's go and take a look. Last place on this topic. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 1. 1 Corinthians 1. <clears throat> and let's take a look at verse 22. 1 Corinthians 1 and 22. And it reads, For the Jews require a sign. And signs are for the ones who don't believe. It said in the Greek, seek after wisdom. So the Greek, they want to know some wisdom. It says, but we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews, a stumbling block. A lot of people have a problem with the name of Jesus Christ and they stumble at that stone and become broken. It says, and unto the Greeks, foolishness. So the Greeks think they think it was foolish. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, because you can have both Jews and Greeks, hear what thus saith the Lord. It said, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. So Jesus Christ is power and wisdom. Let's take a look. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom. So Jesus Christ is wisdom. And righteousness and sanctification and redemption that according as it is written, let him that glorieth or he that glorieth, let him that let him glory in the Lord. I got to read 31 again that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. So if you're going to glory about anything, glory in the Lord, like it said over there in uh, Jeremiah 9 and 24. All right. So with that being said, family. We're going to let it rest right there. And that was a mouth that the a mouth of wisdom that adversaries cannot gain, say, nor resist. So let's move right on with the uh, mission statement of the channel, which is to turn the hearts of the people back to God. And I really do pray that uh, we, we acknowledge our sins and confess our sins and repent. All right. So let's go and see what Peter was doing on the day of Pentecost. Let's go and look at uh, Acts 2. Let's start at verse 37. It says, now, when they heard this. Because Peter was letting them know what they did to Jesus Christ, how they crucified him. It says, now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? So what shall we do to escape the, the, the condemnation or to be made in good standing with the Lord? What shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of jesus christ for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the holy ghost so we need to repent and be baptized and who is this for you think it was just for them no it was for us too it said for the promises unto you and to your children and to all that are far off even as many as the lord our god shall call 
God is calling us through his word, family. Don't ignore him. Open up that door and let him come in. It's a great benefit that come with that, all right? So I'm humbly asking the Father in the mighty name of Jesus for him to please forgive us of our sins and create within us a heart that's going to serve him perfectly according to his will all of the days of our life so that we can be found worthy of the first resurrection when he appears at his coming. All right. So also we humbly ask in the Father in the mighty name of Jesus for him to forgive us of our sins once again and for him to open up our eyes and our ears to what's being said in his word. May he please cast out those spirits of sicknesses and devils and diseases. May he break down those strongholds that Satan got us bound up by. May he continue to bless our path and show us the right way to go. And so with that being said, I humbly ask for the, for the Father to send his Holy Spirit. May it rest mightily upon us and our household. I love you all so much. And Lord willing, we'll be back tomorrow with another topic out of the Holy Scriptures. Peace in Jesus name.